It is 1827, Baltimore, Maryland, United States of America. A group of well-to-do men discuss the idea of building one of the most ambitious projects in the young country's history. Building a transportation link from the city of Baltimore to the Ohio River some 300 miles away. That same year, the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad was incorporated to build this new link. Construction began July 4th, 1828 with the laying of the first cornerstone done by the last living signer of the Declaration of Independence, Charles Carroll of Carrollton, who was 91 years old at the time. A song was written for the event by composer Arthur Clifton called The Carrollton March, the first song ever written about a railroad. This event would also be Charles Carroll's last public act. Surveys for the route began a few days later, but there was still one question. How should this new railroad, a very new idea at the time, be powered? Almost all railways in the UK and the US were still horses pulling wagons, but in some railways in both countries were using this new invention, a steam locomotive, to pull wagons and cars. In 1828, four men, Jonathan Knight, Ross Winnis, William McNeil, and George W. Whistler were sent to England to examine railroad construction and operations to possibly use on the B&O. The first locomotive, which was ordered by the Baltimore and Ohio, was a Robert Stevenson 060 design built in 1829 named America. Presumably, this was ordered by the men who were sent to England for the B&O. The locomotive was a duplicate of other 060s operating on the Stockton and Darlington Railway in England. The locomotive was apparently lost at sea and never arrived. With this loss, the B&O was in some trouble. About this time, the B&O was started, a fairly successful businessman from New York purchased 3,000 acres of land in the Canton area of Baltimore as an investment since he heard the railway would increase land value. The man was Peter Cooper. Since the B&O would be a big customer of metal, Cooper created the Canton Iron Works, but the B&O was having technical difficulties getting started. Cooper decided to make a locomotive himself. Parts from various sources were used to build a very small, four-wheel, vertical boiler and vertical cylinder steam locomotive. It was constructed in the machine shop of George W. Johnson, where future locomotive designer for the Cumberland and Pennsylvania Railroad, James Milholland, was apprenticed. The locomotive, named Tom Thumb, was successfully tested in September 1829, and by the next year it made test trips on the new 13-mile line between Baltimore and Ellicott Mills, Maryland. This new railroad created competition with a local stagecoach line, the Stockton and Company, which challenged the locomotive to a race, eight miles between Baltimore and Relay House. The race occurred in late summer of 1830. Tom Thumb pulled away easily, but the belt that drove the blower for the fire slipped, and without adequate heat for steam, the horse won the race. The locomotive proved itself, and by 1831, all horses had been retired by the B&O. The Tom Thumb was the first successful American-built steam locomotive to operate on a common carrier railroad. However, it was only an experiment to prove that steam locomotives were the way of the future. Never used in revenue service, the locomotive was disposed of at an early date. The B&O had many new locomotives built in 1834 and 1835, so it can be assumed the Tom Thumb was gone by then. Due to the early date of the Tom Thumb and how it was constructed, there are next to no records of its true design. The best records come from letters written on the subject by Peter Cooper himself, and early Baltimore and Ohio mechanical engineer Ross Winnis. These were written some 40 years after the Tom Thumb was built, so not all details could be recalled. The most well-known version of the Tom Thumb is one that was built by the Baltimore and Ohio for its 100-year anniversary and fair of the Iron Horse event in 1927. This 1927 operational replica was made to be more practical than the original for it to actually operate. This version was based off an 1892 wooden replica built by Major Joseph Pangborn, a railway historian and newspaper owner and publicist. This design differed quite a bit from Cooper's and Winnis's descriptions.
All of these discrepancies have led to many variations of the locomotive. One of the best models or replicas I have found is a half-inch scale or 1 24th scale model based on Peter Cooper's descriptions at the National Museum of American History, part of the Smithsonian, in Washington, D.C. The most accurate working replica is a half-scale design at the Heston Steam Museum in La Porte, Indiana. The Heston replica operates on 3 feet narrow gauge rather than 4 foot 8 and half inch standard gauge of the original Tom Thumb. The 1927 replica is still the most well known and it sits on display at the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad Museum. The reason I made this video is because of a project my friend Richard and myself have been working on. If you remember from a few months ago, I made a video featuring a 7 and a half inch gauge Tom Thumb locomotive. This was built in 1965, and we acquired it last year. It is close to being operational, and I hope to have a video out next week showing steam tests and maybe having it actually run. So please do subscribe to my channel if you do like this sort of content. Stay tuned for more on our locomotive, and of course any other videos that I have that will be coming out soon. So thank you so much for watching. And as always, keep it old school and God bless you all.